makes all the right noises. Sometimes, especially here in America, we get caught up in the horsepower war. Now this is two and a quarter, and it's as much fun as any of those other kind of cars. In some ways more, because you get to use all the power all the time. Welcome to the episode of Jay Lone's Garage Pandemic Edition, the car featuring today, my 1971 Porsche. 911T. This is the base model Porsche. This is the one you got if, well, you couldn't afford the high performance models. It was 125 horsepower, uh, 2.2 liter six, you know, a uh, very nice car, nothing exciting. And what most people do is what I've done is upgraded a bit, made it a bit more powerful. Uh, you may have seen this car in the restoration blogs if you come to this website. People always say to me, where do you find your cars? How do you get them? You know, I try to go to good neighborhoods, and then I go to gas station good neighborhoods, and I ask, hey, any cool cars you haven't seen for a while that you think might be stored somewhere? Because I find rich people tend to just kind of put stuff in garages. That's what happened with this one. That's what happened with some other cars that I've got. So if you're in, like, Florida, you want to go to Palm Beach area. If you're in California, San Diego, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, just talk to gas stations or car guys or even auto shops. Any cool cars you used to see around here you don't see anymore? Yeah, there was an old man used to come in. I'll tell you one day, I, my wife and I were having our house fumigated. We stayed in a hotel and I took my 1909 Baker Electric down to the Beverly Hills Hotel. My wife had never stayed there. This was like 30 years ago and she wanted to stay there one night. Okay, so I, I pull in with this thing and the old guy comes over, valet, he says, is that Mrs. So-and-so's car? And I go, what? Oh yeah, she used to come here every day up until about 25 years ago, one of these electrics. And then I tracked down where she lived across the car, disappeared to go. But that was a clue. Oh, that was kind of cool. You know, so sometimes uh, if you ask around, that's how you find nice stuff. This car was kind of worn out. It was well used, but unmolested. There was no body rod in it. Uh, this car was parked in a garage, uh, actually an underground garage in Beverly Hills, a condo. A uh, guy bought the car new in 71, and he kept it at his mother's uh, condo in Beverly Hills in an underground parking space. It was parked, I guess, in the late 90s. It was one of those deals where you park right against the wall, and then somebody else parks behind you. And then he lost the key. And then the tires went flat, and then he, I don't know where they moved away or whatever. Anyway, the car just sat and sat. When the owner finally passed away, I, I got a call from his wife, who would I like to buy it. And I went down and looked at it, and being a California car, the most important thing in Porsche, it was 100% rust-free. There wasn't an ounce of rust on this car. It's a well-used car, well over 100,000 miles on it. But the original paint, now we just buffed up this little area to see how well it would hold up. And uh, it looks fantastic. I mean, because it wasn't uh, subjected to the sun and didn't sit outside, it sat in a dark room for 20 years, 25 years. Uh, interior was a little tatty, so we've, we've, uh, we're doing up the interior. Stoddard out of Ohio there, they do, they have all the Porsche stuff. They do a great job. So we're getting a lot of the replacement pieces from them. Just did the rear seat. Uh, still have the front seat to do and a few other things, but it's coming along good and this thing should be running the next time uh, The next time we check in with you as you can see it's a nice straight car had a little Accident damage uh, We'll put it up on the lift and we'll show you that not much just you know just the usual dings and stuff it had a hundred and something thousand miles on it when I got it so but uh, It's a Porsche so they can take it, you know uh, I always say, if you watch this website, whenever they car and drive and road and track, they do these shootout things with the fastest cars. The ones that always compete and always do well are Porsche and Corvette, because those two groups drive, just drive the heck out of their cars. They like to use them, they use them hard. You know, a lot of Italian exotics, oh no, this car, I've had it 30 years, it's got 18 miles on it. Well, good for you, I, I, I don't get that whole thing. So we did a complete, restoration on this. We didn't repaint the whole car. We just touched up areas. So I would say it's probably 80% original paint. Uh, I like the way it sits. You know, it's funny when you drive a car that's really lightweight. What is this thing? 2,700 pounds, something like this. 
and with this upgraded motor it's got about two and a quarter horsepower so it really goes well I mean you're never lacking for anything it's great fun to drive it handles nice I wanted to keep the original block because well it's a numbers matching car I wanted to keep the original uh, with that 901 style dog leg transmission which is when you switch from car to car you forget oh that's right foot first is over here it gets so annoying but uh, but it's fun it's part of the character of the car you know when we did the engine on this thing uh, we took it up to 2.5 liter well I don't want to repeat myself so let's go back to the restoration block and I'll show you what we did to the motor take a look it's a Porsche guy uh, Daryl Hall you might remember from the popular singing group Hall and Oates as you see, the road has been very rough on him. It's been a tough, tough gig doing. So now he's back to doing Porsches. Daryl, how are you? Good to I'm see you. I'm doing really well. Thanks, uh, Jay. He is our Porsche guy. Tell us what we're doing here. This is my uh, engine from the 71 911T, which was the base Porsche model. Yes. What was it? 2.2 liter? 2.2 liter. 2.2 liter. Now, we're taking it to what? 2.5? 2.5 liter, yeah. exactly. Right, right. So what we've done is gone to larger barrels or bigger pistons you can see that the difference in the size right. of the holes here yeah and so we get a bigger bore plus a longer stroke crank right. this is a crank out of a 2.7 liter so we're getting exactly 2.5 liters and with a longer stroke we get a lot of torque right instead of going to a very large bore with a short short stroke and we didn't go to 2.7 liter or 3.2 because i wanted to keep the original transmission with the old yep. dog leg on it just to yes. keep it i didn't want to make it a hot rod hot rod i just want to make it a little bit more powerful 911 and we put the dual plug head on it right dual plug head Let's head on it. it and and larger valves right so you'll see there's Two spark plugs. Right, in very cool. One on the top, one on the bottom. They they sit. I didn't ask you. Do these fire simultaneously, or is there a, a millisecond between? There's them? there's a I believe it's a 12 degree difference okay. between top and bottom. The okay. bottom fires first, the top fires second. Okay. Because the flame travel is lower on the bottom than it is on the top. Gotcha, gotcha. So then we got bigger holes coming in here and bigger bigger valves. Right. So it's going to breathe a lot better through the set of Weber carburetors that, that's going on it. And we put the oil squirters in there, so we're going to have a little more, uh, yeah, a little, yeah. little bit cooler. So if we come over here to the, yeah. to the sh case. And a magnesium case. Which it, is this cool. is a magnesium case. Which is and cool, that's, I think, even on yeah. the base model, the yeah. 11T, they use magnesium. So if we look right down in here, there's a little spot, bright spot, in there yeah. and that's a little orifice that is drilled into the oil passage and it squirts oil up onto the skirt of the piston so that it it doesn't detonate as much and it also doesn't burn right right and what do we have here it, there's a there's a, a plug for for machining at the factory and there's a just an aluminum plug that that is pressed in and I like to put epoxy on the oh, top to help keep, keep it in yeah cool all right yeah and our transmission is over here? The tra yeah. How bad was the uh, synchros and whatnot? Synchros weren't too bad. Yeah. The, yeah. the brake bands were worn out. Right, right. Um, but the, the teeth themselves are, are just flying. Good, good. And the other thing we're doing is, is put, putting a, uh, a limiter slip in it. Uh, instead of just the old one legger that you right. get on the power and it lights up the right rear and right. then you get go the other way and it lights up the other rear. Right. And this will will allow the car to be a lot quicker. Cool, very cool. And more more predictable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crankshaft, this this the the two seven crank or the, the seventy point four millimeter stroke is a much more balanced crankshaft counterweighted better um, with this crankshaft you can you can take it to over 7,000 rpm mm -hmm. easily and these are our new rods and those are the new Corilla rods oh boy, yeah. that are significantly lighter and stronger than yeah. the than the stock rods boy they're beautifully made aren't they, they do a yeah. really nice <laughs> job <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say that too much because then they raise the price again <laughs> they, they, you know, it's, 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 it's real art I like these early air-cooled 911s because the 
Engine bays are so clean, you can get to everything. You can see some of the updates, the Weber carburetors, the MSD ignition on it. It's not too radical. Two and a quarter horse is just about right. You know, I didn't want to do flares and all this kind of nonsense. I just want a nice driving car with a bit more power. Um, brakes are fairly stock and they, obviously new pads and everything, but they, they stop fine. Uh, it's just such a light, fascinating, fun car to drive. They do become addictive and it's so different. Porsches are so different than any other kind of car. Just figure out exactly how much oil you got to drive like 40 miles and then check the oil after it's warm, which is always weird to me because, you know, I, I come from the old school. Before I take a car out, I always pull a dipstick, check the oil just to be sure. And of course, there's never anything on the stick. Oh, my God. You know, I, I, you get all sort of screwed up with these things. But uh, it takes about, what, eight and a half quarts, something like that. Wonderful driving car. Uh, the engine's been, as I said, totally rebuilt. So even though it has 100,000 miles on the body, you couldn't tell. It's a great thing about California. You know, it's so dry that these things never rust. And these early cars were just notorious for that. But and I, I'll, I'll just show you, and we'll put it up on the lift. You'll see what I'm talking about. It was bumped in the back once and bumped in the front. So it was tricky getting these to close exactly. But that's OK. But never, not, not crushed, just you know, just normal road damage that you would experience on a regular basis. No matter what you think you know about Porsches, it's always good to find a specialist. One of the best out here is Scott's Independence, Inc. in Anaheim, California. He just does air-cooled Porsches. And when we got this thing all done, I took it out, and the first week I'm shifting, I put the clutch in, boom, pedal goes right to the floor. I'm stuck, ah, flatbed it back here. And it's, it, I guess from what? Uh, Two years, 70, 71, I think it was, they had this cable operated deal on the clutch. It was sort of the reverse as opposed to pushing it in. It, it pulled it out and it, it couldn't take the added horsepower that we had put in the motor. And at first we put the cable back on and tried, okay, let's try it again. And about three weeks later, I shift, boom, same thing happened. Okay, that's it. Uh, I sent it down to Scott, uh, pulled the transmission, reinforced the cases, made it stronger and converted it back to the old traditional style clutch of the two liter cars from the late 60s. And now it's perfect, it's, it's fine. But uh, again, to us here at the shop, Porsches are kind of different, kind of new. I didn't get into the Porsche game until, uh, well, I, I guess it's started when I bought my Carrera back in 2004, <laughs> 16, 17 years ago. But anyway, th they're just different and there is, and, when you find a specialist like Scott who knows exactly how these cars are supposed to operate, it can really uh, just take a lot of wear and tear off your mind and your wallet. Because we had finished the thing and then ah, like the clutch kept going out and, and then we found out now those, those clutches were bad, even stock, they didn't last very long. Uh, so he converted it back to the old style and now, now it's great, now it's perfect, runs cool, runs fine. Um, let's go over the inside of the car. As you can see, the interior is completely stock, stoddard, as I mentioned in the restoration video. Beautiful leather, beautiful seats. You know, I didn't want to go to the buttock clutching, clutching Recaro racing seat. You know, I just want a nice, comfortable car that's fun to drive. I like this. I, I like pre-airbag wheels. I know they're not as safe. I get it, but I just like it. You know, it's interesting. I always heard that the key was over here because of racing. That's what they always say that you know, during Le Mans, you could, the guys could jump in and with this hand, turn the key while they're shifting gears. And that's why it's that way. But then I heard when they were a young company at Guamund and those places and struggling, well, they saved this much wire by moving the ignition here instead of putting it over here. So that saved a couple of cents. So you always hear those kind of things. I have no idea. It's just sort of interesting. Nice greenhouse, very comfortable car. It's just so light. It really is addictive. I see why Porsche guys get addicted because it's just different to drive than anything else out there. It handles different. You go into corner, you know, you want to power through the corner. Um, and Porsche is now the only rear engine car sold in America. It's the only one you can get. There are mid-engine cars, but no rear engine like, like these. Um, 
I don't beat on this. I like to drive it swiftly. I like to take it through the hills. And I only compete against myself. You know, I don't try to race guys. Uh, I don't try to turn it into a phony, you know, Carrera or any of that kind of stuff. You know, when I got it, I thought, ah, oh, it's this horrible brown color. I hate that. Well, maybe I'll paint it green or do something with it. But then once we cleaned it up, I started driving it. People come out of the woodwork to tell me how much I like the, I guess, sepia color, they call it. I call it baby poop brown, but hey, whatever you want. And now I really like the color because it's so 70s. There's nothing out there now like this. You know, all cars now are matte gray or white or black or silver. And that, that's, a, that's about it. But this, this, it just doesn't look like anything else on the road. And I get an awful lot of compliments on it. I mean, we did new rugs and all of that. And it's just such a pleasure to shift. You know, Scott did a nice job with the transmission. And I didn't realize how out of whack it was because I don't have a lot of experience with 911. So it was always, <laughs> but he set it up properly, strengthened the cases. And uh, it was fantastic. Uh, I think you all know the Porsche layout. You got, you got your gas here, speedometer dead center, of course. Uh, tachometer, I mean dead center, speedometer off to the side. You know, just the radio, when you go like this, you get the station. I've talked about this before. I hate these modern radios where you turn it and the screen goes blank and, and a line moves across it. Yeah, just just press the button. I, let me get to the station. Okay, thank you very much. I don't have to take my eye off the road to change the station. Um, I like this standard Porsche wheel. You all know the standard stock controls. Heater is right here, and then you have a hand throttle here. I mean, it's hard to believe this car is 50 years. I mean, it's half a century old. But this is when uh, they were really trying to sell to the American market. So they come out with this lower priced model, the 911T. This is the base model, 125 horsepower, which, which moves it along fine with only about 2,700 pounds. So uh, let's take it next door. We'll put it up on the lift and uh, we'll see if we can find where that accident damage was. Let's start it up. I love the ringing through the cylinder. Okay, we have it up on our sterile Coney lift, as you can see. I've put a few thousand miles on it. Stays nice and clean down here. Compared to this Santa roll bar here to make it a little stiffer and a little nicer. See, we got our Coney shocks up in there. But the important thing is, there's no damage. There's no, there's no rust. Floor pans are excellent. All along here, this is where you want to look when you're buying these kind of things, the sills. These are the first things that rust out, especially around these points. As you can see, it's definitely not a show car. It's a car we use all the time. And it's just so much fun to drive. If you don't get the Porsche thing, it's probably because you've never really driven one. And these old ones, obviously they were not Corvettes or Mustangs and couldn't keep up with those guys, but it's just a different feel. It's a feeling of precision shift quality it's just so enjoyable to drive especially up in the hills it's kind of nice not having any freeze problems or corrosion problems like that within the motor nothing there but oil but as i said the floor plans are nice Say four plan, I mean floor pans. I said four plans. Four pans are nice. Uh, as you can see, I need to clean it up in here a little bit, but. When you buy one of these things, this is what you want to do, put it up on a lift and, and take it to a Porsche guy and have him just do it for you. Just inspect it. Get a good one, you'll enjoy it the rest of your life. You get a bad one, oh my God, it'll drive you crazy, nickel and dime you to death. 
Because you know what happens with these things? People do fixes on fixes and just put it back to that. You see where it's been beefed up here, you see? Nicely done. Once again, Scott, thank you. Let's uh, take this thing out on the road and show people how it goes. I love these early air-cooled cars. There's just a purity about them. They are so unlike anything else that's out there, especially back in the day. I like how compact and tidy this car is. You know, extremely comfortable. These seats are really nice. A manual gearbox. I know manual's not as fast as a, a PDK or any of that other stuff, but it sets a feeling of control. The car now has 100 more horsepower than it had stuck. Which feels just about right. It pulls to about 7,300 RPM, something like that. And it just makes all the right noises. Sometimes, especially here in America, we get caught up in the horsepower wars. Ooh, 700, 800, 900 horsepower. You know, this is two and a quarter, and it's as much fun as any of those other kind of cars. In some ways more, because you get to use all the power all the time. You know, I've talked about this a lot with Porsche. I love when you just sort of pick second gear and then put your foot in it and watch the tack come all the way around. 25, three, four, five, six, seven, seven foot, boom, and then shift. I mean, it just makes it so much fun. And of course, it goes without saying, there's no driver's aids of any kind on this thing. No anti-lock brake, no lane control, no, you know. See, they have something different. You're supposed to know how to drive. That's the key. Learn how to drive, thank you. There's nothing on this car that doesn't need to be there. I hope you're enjoying this engine note as much as I am. about 75. This is the golden age of motoring, I think, you know, when computers and everything have an overwhelm. You know, you have cars now where they, they pipe in the engine noise, so it sounds, well, what, what is that? That doesn't make any sense. Now, how about just having a nice engine noise instead of faking one and piping it in? I mean, love it just has a radio. You turn it on, you listen to it, I turn it off. I don't have to program it and oh. This is the kind of car you go out for the day. And you still get pretty good gas mileage. Excellent visibility, plenty of headroom. And when you find one that has good bones like this one, not really dented anywhere too much, not, not too much damage, nothing to knock everything out of whack. Ah! And for the most part, bulletproof reliability. You build them right, you can make them oil tight. Yes, there are cars that they're faster, and I'm sure there are cars that handle better, but it just handles right. It just feels like it's dancing in your fingers here. You know, when you move that shift lever and it, lever and it clicks in, nothing as nice as a perfectly executed shift. every modern 911 is a direct descendant of this one. You know, there are a lot of guys out there that can tell you every numerical designation of every Porsche and gears and ratios and 996, 992, all of that. I'm not there yet. I'm getting there. 
But nothing makes me feel as good as driving this 50-year-old example. Just a few upgrades, and it feels like a modern car. I'm sorry, this is not as in-depth as it could be. Just with all that's going on these days, it gets a little crazy. Can't really take it out in the hills and show off too much because, well, for obvious reasons. But anyway, I hope this gave you a little insight into what makes Porsches great. And uh, make a U-turn, and we'll see you guys again next week. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go take a drive for the day. See you later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>